In this video, we're going to be solving our example one using the bisection method. So example 3.1, use the bisection method to approximate the positive root of the function y equals x squared minus two within an error of 10 to the minus four. Okay, so let's put this information into our program. We're going to be using GeoGebra. You can use any spreadsheet program that you know of. So first we'll input our function. Click down here in the input bar. f of x was x squared minus two. We hit enter and we see the parabola and this is the positive root that we're looking for over here. Let's put in our error and then we'll go search for the root first with GeoGebra's numerical method and then with our bisection method over here. So again down in the input bar, error equals and remember that GeoGebra is case sensitive, so one point, and you have to have a capital E minus four. Let's find the root using GeoGebra first. It automatically uses Newton's method. Again, we're in the input bar down here, and we just start typing root. And we, what we want is this one, function initial value. That means that it's looking for it using Newton's method. So click on that one. The function is f tab and an initial value you can use as one. And it finds, there it is, to as many places as we want. We can change our rounding to be as many places as we want. Right now we have 10 because we're actually only looking for four places. So we now put in all the information we have and found extraneous information. What are we missing to start the bisection method? We're missing the interval where the function changes sign. So let's go over here, find a couple of blank columns. And how do we find an interval change of sign? We know that it's at positive root, so what we'll just say is we'll just type in the first non-negative, type in zero here, and then we're gonna tab to the right, and then we want it to find the function value of that, so we type equals f of, and then the name of this cell is i1, so i capital one, and hit enter and that's that minus two that's down there that we can't see. And then we, we can have it increase by one. So we're coming down here, equals, and we'll say I1, capital again, plus one. And you can, just like in any spreadsheet program, find the little block and bring it down, right? We see these are the same sign, so that doesn't work. So we just take that row and copy it down. And now we have two, and that's a positive one, so this will be our interval. Let's mark that with a color. So our interval is one, two. This is A and this is B. So let's start our spreadsheet for the bisection method. So here we have our title row. And now in order for it to fit into my little space, I have actually made the ones that only are important by virtue of their sign smaller. But of course, you can have your whole screen to work with and keep them all the same size. So we need an, a column for the iterations, an x left column, the, the left boundary of the interval, an x right column, the right boundary of the interval, the function value of x left, the function value of, of x right, the midpoint, the function value of the midpoint, and a check on the error. Remember the error was b minus a divided by two to the n. When it's smaller than our error, we're done. Okay, so how do we get started on this table? First, let's put in our numbers for our iterations. So we would put one here and hit enter. And now we can have it automatically add just like in any spreadsheet program equals. Always remember that GeoGebra is case sensitive. So this one is a capital A two plus one, enter. And now we can copy down just like in Excel, it'll do it with relative addresses. We just click on it, take the little box, and drag it down to where we need to go. Remember that our start interval was one at the left, so enter, and then we go over here, two at the right. So this was our interest, entrance data here. And we go over here to B minus A, and we can type two minus one, and then divided by two to the n, and n is a two, because it's going to change, 
And what we want to know is if it's smaller than air, which we've already put in. And we get a false. And so how many steps do we need to do? We take this answer, click on it, take our little box and drag it down. And when we get to true, we're done. Ah, there's true. So we're going to mark it with green. And so this is going to be our answer right there. The midpoint on the true line. Now we're set up. And so here we are. We want this to calculate the function value of x left. So we click on it, equals f of what is the address here? B2. So capital B2. Enter. And then we want this one to do C2. So equals F of C2. Always remember capitals. This is the midpoint. So we needed to add these two points here and divide by 2. Click equals a parenthesis. B2 plus C2 capitals. Arrow over divided by 2, enter. And we see that it's right. And then we need the function value. So again, equals f of, what's the address here? f2. So f, that's little f, because that's the function. And then capital F2. And enter. Now comes the actual hard part. These two here. We have to decide how to make the new left point. Well, we remember, well, the new left is a condition. If f of the old left divided by f of the midpoint is positive, then we replace it by the midpoint or else we leave it as the old left. So let's, let's take that and go work the formula. So, so click here. Equals, we need the condition if, and a bracket, right, a bracket, and then we want to divide what does it say? F of the left one divided by F of the mid one. So this is D2 divided by G2. So we go back here. D2 divided by G2. If that's positive, then we want the left border to be replaced by the midpoint. So that's F2. Else, we want the old one, which is B2. And we should get one because these two are different signs, so it should keep the left. Good job. Okay, now this one should be replaced when we do it. Here we are in the cell, equals, conditional, if, bracket, and what do we want? F of right, so E2 divided by G2. E2 divided by G2. Don't use multiplication, it puts too much effort on the computer. If that's positive, then replace it with F2. If it's not, then keep C2. And this one should replace it, so this one should become 1.5. That's it. That's all the work you need to do. Everything else is copy. First thing we do is we copy these formulas down. So we mark them and copy them. Hold on to the little block and copy it down. And then we go back and get all of them and copy down to where we have our true. And that is our answer there, rounded to our error, which was 10 to the minus 4, so five decimal places. So our, our answer is 1.4142. Now we're to the, to the fifth decimal point, and we round that 4 to 5. And this is our answer. So now, formally, what is the answer to our example? Well, it is that the positive root of this function is 1.41425, that's the number we got, plus or minus 10 to the minus fourth. And what do we know is the root of this function? The square root of 2 is the root of that function. So what are we saying here? We're saying that the square root of 2 is bigger than 1.41415, that's where we've subtracted out 10 to the minus 4, and less than 1.41435, that's where we've added 10 to the minus 4. Is it? Well, let's look at our GeoGebra root rounded to five places. 
at five decimal places, we get 1.41421. Is this in this range? Yes, because 21 is bigger than 15 and smaller than 35. So we did get an answer within this range. Remember though, it took us 14 iterations with the bisection method to get this small precision of 10 to the minus fourth. Later on, we'll do this example with Newton's method and see how much faster it converges. It reaches a good approximation when it works. So the bisection method is very slow and tedious, particularly by hand. We will do one example by hand in the next video, but it always works and it approximates the root. And that, as we say, is that.